This is Karma Tashif, and you're watching Talking Schmidt. Holy cannoli. It's cool, like tonight is the night. <laughs> yeah. All big dogs in. Do we really want to be here? Oh, everything's changed. We on? Schmitty? Talking Schmidt. Talking Schmidt, dude. <laughs> you gonna come out different. <laughs> shit my pants, man. Your Rolodex is fucking deep. Holy shit. It's right. about the one. The one. The one. Who is this guy? He thinks he's tough shit. What's up? Come on, Schmitty. What the fuck? Tell the skateboard police to come get me. What is happening? I'm here for Greg Smith. Yeah! All right, welcome back, everybody. This is Schmitty with another episode of Talking Schmidt. Today on the fucking program, legend, another legend, another legend, and another Visalia legend. We're talking Dale Blackman, the Paez brothers, Tom Knox, Consolidated, Early Dogtown, the Debunker video, AM Magic, the Flumes, Tule Fog, and so much more. This is is karma tasha what's up buddy look at this good to see you dude yeah you too how are you yours man i'm good yeah where are you at dayton ohio oh okay Fuck yeah. yeah in my living room or whatever yeah i got records and shit in here and some stuff oh nice you liking it out there um it's been good it's been cool. good. I mean, you know, it's slower pace. Yeah. It's easier to get by. But I think that's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, man? So good to see you, Greg. Yeah, you too. I'm doing good. I got married like a year ago. And so I've been adapting to that. And like uh, she had a dog. So I hadn't owned a dog in like years. And so and we live in a uh, apartment. So that's we. you know, no yard is interesting. But it's cool. I love, I mean, I'm blessed, dude. I just kicked it with Jesse, Richard, Andy, Jason. No shit. And, and uh, Ricky, uh, Ricky Windsor in Sacramento. Oh, wow. Dude, Windsor. it was so sick. It was just like, whatever, 30 years. <laughs> you know? Where were you guys? Uh, there was some, I don't even know what it was, but it was something in Sacramento that mm-hmm. um, they do maybe annually. It's like, uh, kind of like a fundraiser or whatever. Yeah, and Toland was there too. <laughs> it was just oh like, man, dude, it, was, it was oh. such a great day. Like I just came home smiling. I drove up by myself and met. I didn't realize what we were getting into, and it was just like ended up being an epic dinner and just lots of laughs and shit catching up. Wow, fucking epic crew. Yeah, dude. Fuck, That's I'm sick. I'm stoked we're doing this. I I'm hyped actually. Me too. Are you still playing music? Yeah, I've been, yeah, I got my, I got my, um, I got these, my Fender amplifiers worked on recently and got them sounding all killer. And I got, I'm playing both of them at the same time. I'm going into both of them and it sounds really rad. I like the setup I have going right now. Oh, sounds cool. super cool, man. Nice. Yeah. Um, I was jamming with my neighbor and we had a drummer going for a while and we were jamming a bunch before COVID. We were called Eat the Rich. Hmm. We here in the living room, like like you might be able to see behind. Me. Oh there's, yeah, there's a drum set, drum kit, and yeah. we've got powered wedges and like amps. His his bass amps over here. He's my neighbor, so we were jamming a bunch. Eat the rich was, and then COVID hit, and then we just really haven't got the momentum going. Like we just jam out on the porch and stuff. Trying to, I'm always doing it myself. I'm always around music because I, in the summertime, I do um monitors on stage for for bands at this venue called the Levitt. Oh okay music venue in Dayton it's an outdoor music shell we do like four months of, of shows there free free concerts in downtown Dayton nice yeah, I do the sound on stage they call it a monitor engineer okay I'm on a Yamaha QL5 board and I'm doing the mixes on stage for the musician so I'm on stage a lot I'm on I'm, I'm around music you ever get uh Nick Friedis come through town what I've been telling the, the executive director um Lisa Wagner Get my friend Nick Freitas, and she's like, "What is he good?" And I'm like, "Just go check him out. Like, check. He's fucking great." Are yeah. You <laughs> I amazing. saw him playing. I saw him singing a song on on the stage at the Warfield. You know what I mean? He hangs out with Josh Homme on on tour in Japan. Like he's yeah. He was almost going to be in the Shins. Yeah, he's wow. on that record. He played guitar on a yeah. A bunch he's of in a songs. side band with Connor Oberst. Yeah. 
I know. <laughs> Huge. Big. Yeah, no we joke. just we just wrapped for up for a while a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he just did. You get a copy of that book? Where is it? I have it right here. Yeah. Let me yeah. It. Sorry if I'm walking away. Yeah, the Thule fog. Yeah. Thule fog. And then, and then he put a little uh, music to go along with it. It's like oh, so wonderful. Yeah. Can I can I tell you a little a little story about like the Thule fog? Absolutely. So. So like, you know, he, he, he describes it great in the book. Like, I mean, he, he must he did a little research, <laughs> so it sounds cool, but they, I guess it's only, it only happens there and it's all these conditions. But so when we were kids, you know, in like 85, 86, we would love when it got real foggy. Cause we had a thing called what it was called is the foggy day schedule. And you, you get on your TV and you, you turn, find this, like this grimy channel, like city access channel and you put it on there and it's all staticky and it's it's like a listing of like a b and c foggy day schedule so if it was like c you know you go in with caution b was like a two hour delay and a foggy day schedule was off for the day it was too foggy uh. so we get those b b days all the time and we we would call each other let's go skate and we'd go like skate the pool you know or whatever and wow. one time in particular we went and um skated the pet boys pool on a foggy day schedule and dale my friend dale blackman was like hey i've got a big slide a, a big fiberglass pool slide in my backyard let's go get it and we can put it in the shallow end of of the pet boys pool and roll in and blast airs and we were just like what? okay yeah let's do it and so you know this thing's got like six legs you know it's real tall eight feet tall it's like a big pool slide so we put each two legs on a skateboard and there's like four of us and we're, we're hauling this slide to the pool, you know, which was like a, a half a mile away down the street. So we get this, we get this slide there in the pet boys pool and we're, and it was like Dale Blackman to Nito, you know, myself, who else? I don't know. Some other people, maybe Brent fellows and we're mm. blasting airs in this pool, like rolling in getting so much speed. And then um, blasting hairs and loving it. And then Tom showed up, and I love Tom; he's my hero. Like, but he showed up. Tom Knox. Tom Knox showed up, and he saw this. He saw the the slide in the pool, and he was trying to skate because he wanted to work. We we just wanted to roll in and blast. We weren't. We were. You know, we were skating vert at that time, the YMCA vert ramp a lot, so we could all do airs and stuff. We were getting that stuff going. Uh, we weren't. We weren't so clued in yet because this was early, like eighty six, eighty seven. You know, it was early. So we didn't, we weren't really like, oh, let's, let's work the shallow and do a line and keep our speed and not have to push or just, you know, Tom got, Tom got there and he wanted to work the shallow and couldn't. So he like, he threw a rock, big oh. piece of concrete rock through the thing and busted a big hole in it. And that was the end of the slide. <laughs> and that happened on a foggy day schedule, you know? Damn. Yeah, was, I don't blame him, man. That's what I would have done. You stupid kids. You're fucking the lines up. Get this thing out of here. Yeah. But anyway. Um, talk a little bit about that. Uh, growing up in Visalia, you, yeah, that, that's where you, were you born there? No, I was born in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Fort Lauder okay. And then you moved to Visalia at like a young age. I moved to Visalia. I first, we, we left my mom and sister and I left Fort Lauderdale, uh, uh, when I was seven years old on my sister's third birthday, we left and we, we lived in, uh, I finished first grade in Mountain View. My grandma lived there. My mom's no mom way. lived in That's Mountain right. View. So I finished first grade in Mountain View. Yeah, she used to she used to have this it was like a little paper sack with like a um like a picnic blanket pattern on it, you know? And she'd always make me an egg salad sandwich to take to to school cuz I was like my I was a vegetarian then. My dad raised me a vegetarian. I really like tacos. So I'm still not eating meat. I didn't eat meat till I was like 10 years old. Mm. So I'd uh, walk with this little bag to to kindergarten or to first grade. So yeah, I finished first grade in Mountain View, and then that summer we moved to Visalia. Okay, there till ninety, late ninety three or ninety four is when I moved to Concord to live with Wade Spire and <laughs> yeah. Albert Concord House forty forty Clayton. Did did you find uh, skateboarding in Visalia? You didn't skate yet until you got there, right? Like Fort Lauderdale and then. No, I was already, I already knew about skateboarding in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, you did? I, yeah, all my friends rode skateboards in um, 
I used to roller skate and there was a, there was a roller rink across the street from a concrete skate park in Fort Lauderdale. Ah. So I used to always watch the kids ride skateboards out front of the house and they would do the little sideways walk on the board. We called it the catfish. I was like, man, look at those kids are doing a catfish. That's so cool. And then we would always go to the roller rink, but my dad would take me across the street to the skate park and we would watch the skaters skate the park. So I was, I've like skateboarding's always been around me. I had a skateboard in fourth grade. I used to ride, skate to school in fourth grade and then the bearings would blow out because they weren't yeah. the case. They and weren't that sealed. was that board. Uh, I, I've been skating my whole life, dude. Roller skating and skateboards have always been in my life, dude, forever. Okay. That, yeah. Did that help with your uh, friend choosing when you got to Visalia? Like, was skateboarding like happening there or did that happen a little yeah, bit? it was later? happening big, but the way how I got into skateboarding, the year before I got into skateboarding, my friend, me and um, Jerome were walking home from from the other side of town and we wanted to get home faster. And so we went, we went inside uh, Macy's and we both stole two little checkerboard wooded and little boards. We just grabbed them and ran out <laughs> and skated home on those. And we were like, man, this is kind of cool. And then like a year later, I started seeing like big wide boards. So I was like, whoa, there's these wide boards. And I saw like a Rob Roscop in fifth grade. I was on a soccer team and Tom Knox's dad was the coach. No way. Yeah. And Tom was on the team. Oh, shit. My friend Shannon Parrish were on the soccer team. And so Tom would bring his board to practice and on, and he would be on the, on the um, basketball court. This is fifth grade. I wasn't, this is 80, 82. Uh, he just sent Tom, just sent me the photo of oh. our soccer photo. It's like 82, 83. No I was seeing him do it. And uh, he was popping ollies on the basketball court. And I was like, Whoa, I've never seen that. And dude, that, that was the spark. Like Tom was on the on the soccer team with Tom and seeing that, and then I'd see him, see him around, and then there was this vert ramp. The rich Rich Stevens, Rich and Ron Stevens had a vert ramp, and it was right by the school where we used to practice soccer. It was right across the street. You could see it, it was a big twelve. It was twelve feet wide and like twelve feet tall. I'm not kidding you. Oh. It was so skinny and so tall, and it stuck <laughs> up this split fence right on the corner of like Caldwell. And I can't remember what that was. That was a long time ago by Crestwood school. So like I was seeing skating and then saw Tom. And then I was like me and Shannon Parrish, he was on the soccer team. I was like, let's get boards. And we got boards like that Christmas. And like, that was it. Sweet. I told my mom, like, mom, I'm going to be a pro skater. Yeah. She's like, okay. <laughs> I was that obsessed. Damn. I was like, it was on. Like I, I was heavy into it. Did you drop, did you finish school or did you drop out of school? Well, yeah, I, I, I went to independent study for like the last year and a half of school. Oh, okay. Uh huh. So I didn't drop out, but, um, don't tell anybody. And I always lie on like job resumes and stuff. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I always lie. Huh? I just say I graduated high school, but no, I, I, I don't actually have my diploma because when I was in independent study, at the end of the year, I went the whole full time, my senior year, doing independent study for a year and a half. At, at the end of the year, the, the teacher's like, oh, by the way, you're going to be short, whatever, five or 10 credits, elective credits. That's like, and they, and they didn't, they didn't have elective credits. They didn't offer that independent study, elective credits. So you, you're going to have to go to summer school. And I was like, no, I'm going on tour with Dogtown. <laughs> I'm going on the road with Jim Muir. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to summer school. And then I went on that road trip. That was the first tour. We were on the road for two months. Wade okay. was there, JJ. It was, it was Red Dog was driving the whole time. It was heavy. It so was, that, was that kind of your introduction to the industry was Dogtown? Completely. You didn't have trucks or wheels or anything? It was Dogtown right No. Like no, it was like Bobby, Bobby Goodsby, Bobby G skateboards was in Visalia. He yeah. kicked me some boards back in the day. And then it was, it was like uh Dogtown moved up to San yeah. Fran, right? Yeah. And Red Dogs comes up to Jeff Clint. Jeff Clint. Or come no, Red Dog comes up to Jake. And then I think Jake went up to like Jeff Clint. Do you know any skaters? You know anybody? Dogtown wants to put people to put put some stuff together. So it went. And then Jeff's like, 
Jeff's from Visalia and he used to come back all the time and he'd see me skate in the vert ramp and shit. Mm. And like, he's like, I know a guy that can do my dolly tail slide reverts. And he's like, who? <laughs> Karma. And then, and then literally this is the story, dude. And then like, it got back to red dog and Jeff's like, yeah, he skates the Visalia YMCA vert ramp all the time. We're skating the vert ramp, me and Tom Knox and a, a few other people. And the secretary comes out of the YMCA and she walks out and she's like, is there a guy here named Karma? And they're like, yeah, right here. And she gave me a little piece of paper. She It was a phone number, 415 number. And it was James Muir. And I'm like, James Muir? And Tom looks at it and he's like, fuck, isn't that that fucking guy, fucking uh, Jim Muir, fuck Red Dog? I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I think that's fucking Red Dog. And I was like, no way. And dude, I went home and called him like right then. It was it was Red Dog. He's like, "What's up, bro? Yeah, we want to hook you up." Blah blah blah. Jeff, you know we heard about you. You need some wood. That's what he said. You need some wood. I'm gonna hook you up some wood. Yeah, yeah. Holy and then he, how he hooked rad. Up. I got a package like a week later, and then seriously, like a month later, they bought me a bus ticket up to the city, and I went up, and that's when like I there's this photo I shot with Mofo doing like a five zero on this curb outside of Thrasher. It's like one of the first photos. It was like my tryouts. I'm no. like, made it, kid. You're in. I went out and did like a tryout outside the mag. Yeah, Jim Muir picked me up at the bus station, the Greyhound bus station, like one second. The old one, I don't think is is there anymore. No. He picked yeah. me up at the bus station, dude. And like, we ended up, he took me to the mag. I met everybody, went, checked out the Dogtown stuff, and then hopped in a van with the, Sh- the two Schroeder brothers. Oh, shit. Hopped yeah. in with the other two Schroeder brothers. Okay. And, and uh, Justin Gerard, Paul De Jesus, the early vert skater. And we all, and it was Paul De Jesus, and it was like one other really rad s- skater from down south. Was Markovich on there? No, but he was around, dude. And he's huh. so good, man. He's still real. I've been seeing a lot of footage of him. Yeah. He's- His skating's tough, man. He still mm-hmm. looks like he's got some strong knees. Yeah. It's fucking good. Yeah, he, that was a little bit later. So we went up to the Reading um, Am Finals. It mm. was the one that I think Justin Gerard won that. Oh, he did. So, or maybe um, uh, Max Evans was there skating. Okay. Mario Rubicaba, Jaya Bondaroff, all oh, these dudes. And dude, my head just blew up. Yeah, like yeah. what kind of kid are you? Like, are you intimidated and shy and like anxiety like like seeing mofo and fausto and these people and jake for the first time are you like whoa or are you just like fuck yes dude because i had already i had already been filming and like my buddy seth hum had like we had friends with skate skate zines in visalia Mm. so i already knew how to go out and shoot photos i was ready for it i was already doing it wow it was like totally natural at that and you're not starstruck by like red dog and you're like whoa no i was too naive yet to really know the whole history i wasn't i okay. i didn't know the whole history yet i knew it was there but i didn't know to so that's kind of a good thing and how yeah i was naive i was real naive is part of it i was young like the, i yeah. think i was 16 or 17 when i went up there maybe okay first time and went on yeah. that road trip. i was like yeah i was real young I was up there in 89 late 89 is when i went up 89 okay yeah, I think- it was like like november october november of 89 i went up there for the first time wow yeah um right well, before the 90s and then 90s were you know as you know were rocking dude yeah women like skating was like phew, innovation what do you think it is about visalia though that's it's kind of i mean for me it's I, and i'm not trying to put any disrespect out there but it seems like a random town like out in the valley but so like a lot of fucking rad talented people have come out of there you got yeah. the Piaz brothers yourself knox uh i mean nearby i don't know if alan pearson's really Alan's in there, but, yeah but uh what nanda Remember Zip? Yeah. Uh, Jeff Clint, obviously. like Brent, Brent Fellows. Yeah. What's up with that? Fellows wrote for Schmidt. He used to do He used to do Madonna's overhead high, Christ Air Madonna's overhead high. Right. He, Brent Brent went off to that St. Louis skate camp one summer, like early in the 
87, whenever that camp was in St. Louis, that skate camp. Mm. And he's with Blaze Balloon every day. Oh. And he came back from that camp, dude. And Blaze. he was that's best. We couldn't believe how good he was and how, how high he was blasting. Like right. he was insane, dude. We'd just go there and let's go smoke weed and sit on the ramp and watch Brent skate. He'd uh-huh. fly over our heads. He was sick, dude. Fuck. Miles was, was real rad. Ron Allen is from there. Shout out. Bobby G, Bob Goodsby, Bobby G skate camps and all that shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You got the skate camp right up the hill. But uh-huh. I mean, it's hot as shit there, too. <laughs> like, it's like, it's yeah. not really promoting really? like the best place to skate. But you can skate all year round, really. You can skate uh-huh. in the wintertime, kind of. Okay. It gets chilly, but you can still skate. Right. Huh. But yeah, it's kind of the summers are brutal. We used to just adjust our sleeping habits, you know, and then come out at night and go skate at night. Oh, okay, Arizona style. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I I think I think. Have you ever been up like into the Sequoia National Park? Yeah. Have you seen how beautiful that water is up there and how pure? I think that's part of Visalia's charm. I think that's uh, its only charm is okay. the water, is the landscape those mountains and the sequoias i think that that water is so like it's like granite like it just fucking makes you like mm, you know yeah that's what i've thought my or dad so- my yeah. dad describes sequoia as 90 percent as beautiful as yosemite and 75 percent less people <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly <laughs> it's oh pretty- dude the most that's a beautiful one. Your old man like gets down with nature, huh? Oh, uh, dude. That's he part. he has a van and uh two dogs and like a bed in the back and they just go. That's what I want to do. Yeah. I just want to get like nature parks. I'm so I I love it. I, that's where I feel real comfortable these days. Mm. Yeah, I took all that for granted back then. I we used to go up there a lot, but like now when I go back to visit, man, I'm up in the park. I'm up in there's the swimming holes, man. That water is just like Oh yeah. Let me just get in it. Uh-huh. <laughs> who who did you bond with right away with Dogtown? Like who were the early guys that you would become friends with? Wade, Cardiel, JJ? Wade, Wade was a little bit JJ at first a lot. I'd go stay at his house out in um San Leandro or Hayward, wherever he was living at that time. Uh-huh. I stayed with him a bunch and skated that garage ramp. And then uh Real early on, Justin Gerard, because, you know, he rode for Dogtown. Yeah. So him and I were just little, you know, little street rats at that time, like little, let's lip slide body very loud. Like, you know, like, what can we do that's different, you know? Uh huh. But it was rad. And then, like, I went and stayed with him in, um, him and uh, Brooke when they were in, living in Salinas. And I'd stay with him and he'd come to Visalia and skate. Okay. So, he, like, real early on. And then a little bit later, going on those road trips with Wade and Cardiel, like the cards would come to, to the, to Visalia. Wade would come to Visalia. It was like getting pretty heavy. I mean, that's as NorCal as you can get really with JJ yeah. Cardiel and Wade. That's some no. fucking, that's Dude, diesel. Big fucking dip, like a big Copenhagen dip. <laughs> a like lot of the, dip. The line in the back pocket from the dip can, you know, like him, them, to land, uh, Jeff Tolan, like let's get the biggest dip and just put it in there, man. Ooh, yeah, grave diggers and shit. That was JJ's crew. Oh yeah, grave diggers. That's grave right. Diggers. Did, were you on the trip that they went to Atlanta, like '92, for the skate zone? The the contest they had there. Yeah, the AM finals. Like yeah, me and me and Phil drove there, and we were there. And I remember, I think I I remember you were there, but I know they have the curvy board slide rail on the street course the curvy. yeah and it had a vert ramp and a, a bowl Indoor. inside a spine yeah. like yeah. yeah that place was sick dude yeah i think dude, Jordan was Richter top, got like top three in every event or something like i remember brian howard was doing on that vert ramp and it wasn't he very wide. back brian howard won didn't he yeah. back, backside revert yeah in, <laughs> and like lip slide hang-ups across the whole ramp hanging up shh, and come in no hands he was bad, dude. He was so good. I liked him, man. I like his good um, demeanor. I had I had him on the podcast a while back. I'm trying to get Frazier. That's my ultimate. Mike Frazier would be fucking glorious. Frazier, Frazier's down for the count. Yeah. He wants to he wants to relive. I know, right? <laughs> he's still he doesn't re- need to relive anything. That guy's he's, a man. He's still living. He's just 
killing it. Yeah, I know. I saw, I see footage of all these people, man, all the time. What was the earliest uh, Sodi party you went to? You didn't go to the, fr- which uh, one? Skater of the Year. Yeah. Probably like some of those ones at like bottom you- of the hill. Mike Carroll, I think, bottom of the hill. Okay. So you didn't go to Danny Way at uh, Studio 43? I don't think I was at that one. Okay. That was a sick one. I saw a lot I of footage. I Skate. know, me too. I didn't go that one either. With his arm in a sling and stuff, yeah. right? Doing mm-hmm. nose blunt fights. Yeah. How good he was. Like, I don't need that wing. Like, I can do whatever. I never Shoot. got to even skate that place. It looks so fun. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Those trannies, I think they were on the mini. I think the mini, mini ramp had like elliptical tranny. So, like, you could just blast on that thing for some reason. Yeah. It was, no? felt really mm-hmm. well. Tommy doing like kickflip backside grabs and shit. Yapple dapple. God, dude. How did he do that? And then you turned pro on Dogtown, right? Yeah. Fausto wanted to turn me pro even earlier. He's like, we'll just turn you pro. And I was like, I don't know. I was like, no, I'm not. And then like maybe six months later, they're like, we, you know, we want to turn you pro. And at that point, I was like, okay, fuck it, whatever. And they turned me pro. So. Um, I think I had like five boards with with Dogtown. What was the first graphic? It was um, it was a, a a graphic that this kid from Visalia did, Jesse Vera, and then Kevin Ansel cleaned it up a little bit. Oh, it was the it was a the Dogtown kind of cross, come like busting up out of the ground, like in a in a like a cemetery or some shit. Uh-huh. And it was like vines and like hands creeping out and like little eyes and like poking out it was look like a classic kind of dog town thing i think there's a sticker of it they made a sticker of it okay right it was that one and then there was like you know the the puppet guy with the scissors cutting cutting the um the puppet master there was that one then there was uh another one that was like a take on that godfather graphic oh yeah i remember yeah that was across the whole bottom of the board with like a u.s flag then there was like one remember the white ice boards that dogtown did it's like sweeter than crack cocaine more (laughs) dick white ice that was the ad it was sick dude yeah it was like a top graphic and then just white on the bottom what was like one of the best uh did you go on many trips with that crew like what what was one of the hijinks moments of like I heard Cardiel was addicted to porn back then. <laughs> ma- ma- magazines or something. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. He's like, there's like magazines, like porn, porn photos, like pasted up all over the walls. You know, <laughs> he's like, look, you look back and he's like, just <laughs> going to load. It's like just shooting across, <laughs> shooting across the van. <laughs> Oh man. Oh man. Yeah. Um, was that kind of where you got your travel legs though with that crew? Oh right? my God. Yeah. We did, we did, we did 90 and 91. The first year was Red Dog and like JJ. I th- wait. The, the second year when, I, when we saw you at um, Atlanta. Atlanta, that was just Cardiel and Wade and me. And like we would pick up stragglers along the way and shit. I think we we picked up Al Partnin on the way, like in Milwaukee, and he rode with us for a while. He just oh. racked shit. He was so good at just racking, racking shit along the whole way. You know, hit the payphone. What up? Just rolling, just charging. He might have went to Atlanta with us. Fuck, I can't remember. It's, some of that's a blur. Uh huh. Yeah, that that one was ninety one, and uh, those guys wait. Like we had the van, and we were you know eighteen. Or something. We were all young. Wait, well, Cardiel might have even been younger. But those guys had driver's licenses and knew how to drive, and I didn't. Oh, I was too scared to drive. I didn't start driving until I was like twenty or twenty-one. I was too scared. I just, uh. I didn't know anything about it. You know, I was just tripping. Uh. So I didn't really drive on that trip, and it would piss those dudes off because <laughs> they had to drive all the time. You know, and you I could sleep all the. Yeah, or whatever. <laughs> up, huh? I should have just manned up, dude. I was just too, you know, just. I'm too- surprised they didn't just make like teach you or something. Like, I know. I just got to go straight. I know. I, I might have got behind the wheel a couple times. Shrugi finally, I think Shrugi finally like made me drive once. And then I was like, okay. And I had to drive on the freeway. Mm. It's like one of the first times I was like, okay. And then I drove. Yeah, I don't know, man. I was just like fucking terrified, dude. Mm hmm. For whatever reason, 
So what happened? Like, is that right around the time you met Alan Peterson? Is Alan come into your life? Like, and yeah. Then, and then SMA yeah. starts yeah. up. Alan, Alan started coming to the Visalia ramp. Ah, because we skated with them. We That's skated like with half them. hour away, right? Yeah, it's like forty minutes tops. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, with no traffic, it's close. It's super close. Um, Alan would skate the arc, and so we'd go and skate the arc with him, and he was ripping, dude. Like I, he actually, like, when he was skating the arc, I was like, when I went home back to the Visalia ramp, I was like, I'm gonna bite all his lines, like. <laughs> Alley oop mute air, straight up and down, front side air, big front side air, like you know, these alley oop muters that he was doing and these lines. I was like, I went home and mimicked all his lines. Ah. On the ramp, on our vert ramp, after like he was already like that. But then he started coming to Visalia and skating with all of us. And like the day he showed up, I remember I saw him in the parking lot and I was doing um on on the Visalia ramp, I was doing backside Ollie, one foot tail grabs. Just big old backside ollie, boom, tail grab one foot on the on the vert ramp, you know? And and Alan's out there and he was like, Oh wow, sick. And he wanted to be a part of it. And so he came and got some. Huh. Oh. Yeah. And yeah. so where how did you how did the transition go from uh Dogtown to SMA? I started skating with Alan a bunch and then we'd go stay with his folks in fresno skate fresno and then i think he invited me on a trip up to santa cruz oh uh, and because it, it was out of nhs at that time nhs okay it was nhs dude and it was like nhs was like had sessions at that time they had so, the cannery right yeah they had all that they were fucking huge dude <laughs> yep. they, had, they distributed protect helmets rector gear you could go in there and get full peer pat you could pat up you could get whatever you needed. It was like, wow, mm. take a shopping cart and go hook it up. So I just, so he kind of, he, I think I got enticed a bit by seeing all that, you know? And I mean, I don't know, not much Dogtown was, was great, but ultimately in the end, I, I knew like at some point I wanted to be like, I wanted to have like an, an, something new, like a new company. Like I saw like world industries and all these young people starting new companies and Secretly, that's what I wanted. So that okay. was, that was, I think, just a stepping stone in that direction, maybe, you know? And was Jaya a part of that or no? He was, he was um, on Santa Cruz then, right? Santa Cruz. Um, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. But who's on, S who's the SMA squad? Was Julian? Julian had just left. Oh, uh, okay. A lot of people had left. Um, yeah, I don't think Nottis was there. Weird, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's Alan, a weird era. It Andy weird Roy. Little, it was a weird little transition. What was it? Andy Roy. He, I think he might have been Santa Cruz too. I think oh. Frank. Yeah, Frank Harada might have been like uh, Sims at the time. Oh, that's right. They had really Sims did. too. That's so weird. But I don't know. Then Dave Larue was there. Dave Larue was Ooh. like their vert skater. He ripped. They kind of assembled this team. Like picked up Corey Chrysler and um. Oh, Corey was yeah okay. Nick, Nick was part of it, Nick and Corey, and then um, Dave LaRue, AP. And who was like the TM and show? Was Keenan doing it? Keenan was doing it, yeah. And Berto was like, the, he was like Union Wheels or whatever, OJ Wheels. He was doing wheel the wheel thing back then. And Keenan was running SMA. So that's when you met Berto? Yeah, that's when I met Berto. Berto and, was doing uh, the yeah. strange note zines, right? Strange notes. Right. I already knew well who Berto was. That was like Oh, you real, did? Yeah, from Strange Notes and stuff. Okay. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, I was stoked on that. Oh sick. stoked on Berto and Strange Notes and shit. I liked Santa Cruz because Tom Knox and all that too, you know. Oh so right. Part of all that. So it was that was part of the allure, you know. It's like, oh wow. In mm. and they had their shit together. Yeah. When people talk about like you've got a, a long history of skateboarding, but a lot of people fucking love that debunker part. Debunker, huh? Yeah. Yeah, the video was cool, huh? Yeah. 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 It, I mean, Campbell it's kind and... of. A, it, I don't know. I might be wrong, but for me, it it was a little under radar. Like it's not one of those ones that I think of all the time. But when you put it in, you're like, "Fuck, this thing rips." Good skating, huh? Yeah, really good skating. And 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 kind of like 
to the point. Like it's fucking, you know, it keeps it keeps you hyped. Right. Yeah. It's it was not like, overdone. Too. Yeah. It wasn't too drawn out. We don't need two hour videos ever. I mean, obviously in the Instagram era, we definitely don't. But like even then, we didn't need like. You know, like even the plan B videos, which were fucking amazing. They were long. Like it was like, damn, you know, but Power. if you got like a like a small crew, you could watch the whole video and that guy you hyped to go skating. Yeah, right. So, and that's all you wanted to do was like you were just putting that on. A lot of times you would just put somebody's part on. You're like, let's watch this and then I'll be fired up to go skate and get mine. You know, so fucking rad. dude. Right. It's good like that. Yeah. Well, who was it? And was Tom kind of your guy for that? Like, would you watch a lot of Tom? Like, would you have someone that you were like, fuck, this guy gets me pumped? Yeah. Well, we were watching, you know, I grew up videos were like the first Bones Brigade video, wow. all those pal videos. And then like a vision would throw out some video and you like, um, or some of the Thrasher, early Thrasher videos, you'd see, get to see some good Tommy or, or Gons footage. Mm. There's that one vision video where Gons kick flips that channel in that ditch. Like that, we, that when we saw that, we were like, that's it. That's what's up. Like right. we, we knew we were like, that's the shit. Um, a lot of those old Ohio skate out videos and Savannah slam. I grew up watching all that shit. But like later on, you know, it was like eight, watching eight, you know, some of those eight street videos, those early eight street videos. Mm. Oh, another guy from Visalia, um, Jamie Gilly, to Jamie. Not, not to be forgotten. Jamie Gilly, he rode for he rode for Eight Street. Oh, and wow. he was he was a little he was younger. He's a few years younger than me. He was like the younger kid, so a little mom. And Danny Way, him and Danny like hit it off skating the Vi Vi Visalia ramp. And Danny used to come and stay at his house. Oh. Huh. Danny was real young and they'd skate the vert ramp and then Jamie would go down to San Diego and skate with Danny because Jamie was like really good. He was he was sponsored by H Street early on. Oh. So there was always that H Street influence. One time I went on a trip with Jamie down real early on down to San Diego and went to that house, that H Street house where Jeff Tremaine lived and went skating vert with Danny Way. It was crazy. Oh. Yeah, Jeff Tremaine. Uh, or not Jeff Tremaine. Sorry, um, I'm spacing. Um, that's that's the big brother guy. Ternansky. Ternansky. Yeah, Mike yeah. Ternansky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mike Ternansky was down there. It was it was real cool. That was real early on. So yeah, Jamie Gillies. He's not. He's another one to not be forgotten. What do you think blew your mind the most in uh, street skating evolution? Like seeing a wall ride for the first time, seeing someone hit a handrail for the first time. Like, what was the thing that you were like? Are you fucking kidding me? Like a no comply flip where it just flips yeah. and your foot uh -huh. doesn't hit it. Like I remember some of the shit going like this is magic. What's going on? Yeah. I think kick flips were like that. Kick flips. Yeah. Tom Fox doing a kick flip backside wall ride was was pretty epic for then. And handrails, you know, pretty much anything that Nottis and Gons were doing, you know, or like or like, you know, whatever. Um Christian or Tony were doing on Ver or Rodney Mullen was doing all those guys were just fucking just inventing the sport as it went. They were creating, creating it, creating those fucking moves. As they say, what a good time to be alive. <laughs> I know, huh? Yeah. <laughs> creating the standard moves that we all, you know, run on. Oh, yeah. Oh. I don't know. That's a good question. Well, let's talk a little bit about it, or let's talk a lot a bit about um because SMA didn't last too long, but I'm guessing that with Keenan, Birdo, Corey, Alan Peterson, the next step was kind of like being molded. It didn't just happen and you're like, Yeah, right. Like, are you guys planning this as you're part of the team? Like, how did Consolidated start? It it really started from Keenan. And, and Birdo, like there was like a recession in skating. A lot NHS let go of a lot of people, which I understand, you know, they're they just doing what they gotta do. Right. But they let a lot of people go. And I think this is just what I think. I I, you know, it might have been more stuff, it might have been less, but they were made to kind of wear more than one hat within the business and they had to go screen boards and do all this stuff on top of them being whatever their position was, team manager or whatever this or that. So it was like made to like their workload doubled, but the money didn't change. 
So they were bummed on their work situation, I guess. And they, I don't know, man, it was, I don't know where it started, if the, but I definitely, in my mind, I was like, that would be rad to do our own company. And the second there was any inkling of that, I was like, I'm in like, mm. like what's let's do this. And then it just started from there. And then Moish, Moish Brinman. RIP. Peace. Yeah. Fucking love Moish. He's, you know, he's the guy that did the cube. Probably can't see it. Consolidated he, cube. He did that. Like he did a bunch he of did shit. A lot, right the head. He did all kinds of cool shit. So he was in and Corey was in and, um, Jason wanted to leave Santa Cruz, you know, so he was in. So we were like, that's huge. And, no, and, man, it was and cool. Alan too, right? Alan was in. So it's you. Alan. Tom Knox was, was going to be there too, but that didn't happen. Uh, so Tom Knox is one of the ones on there too, but for what I, I don't remember quite what happened, but it didn't happen. So it's basically you, Alan, Jason, Corey Chrysler, mm -hmm. and then Moish, Birdo, Keenan. Yeah. Is Letitia involved at Jesse that point? Jesse Baez was there as an am. Oh, he was right out of the gate? He was there too. Yeah, he was there in the beginning. Um, no, Letitia wasn't part of it until years later. Oh, uh, okay. After, I believe, when Keenan sold it for a dollar or whatever to Birdo, and then... <laughs> <laughs> and then um Letitia got involved and took it took it to the next level. Well, what happened there? Those dudes got in a fight and he was just over it and was like, I'll give you a dollar amount or Keenan wanted out. He started it initially, I think, with some money that his dad gave him or something. Mm. And then he was ready to get out. Mm. No, you know, we all know there's no money in making skateboards. Yeah. Like manufacturing them or something. Ooh, what was so what were some fucking early days highlights i gotta hear about like your first i mean jason jesse he's a friend of mine now but like god damn like so much yeah. like if i was gonna be starstruck it's mark gonzalez jason oh, Hasoy, yeah. yeah so like having Ooh. him be a part of it and alan oh, yeah. i mean what's it like Corey's a crazy motherfucker like mm. i mean you you guys go on a trip early on that like you guys all bonded or were you already close I, what, what, what's what's the scenario yeah um i think just that santa cruz connection being in santa cruz you know mm. skating together a little bit and and hanging out i knew i mean i knew jason he probably doesn't remember me but he i remember the first day i ever saw him was he showed up to the visalia ymca and uh to skate the vert ramp it was him and steve claire and they pulled up and i think steve Ooh. pickup truck and this guy gets out as jason he's wearing like long black sleeve black pants like doc martin boots short hair he's got this big shiny chain on i think it's like an iron cross he looks fucking gnarly i'm like <laughs> this guy looks like some gnarly punker dude and then it was jason and then those guys padded up and skated and we were just like oh my god dude that was the best thing about that what Visalia ramp is like because Gons used to date some woman in Fresno and so he'd be at the arc all the time and Lee Ralph was around and like I'd show up oh, to the ramp and Gons and Lee Ralph would be riding the ver ramp sharing one board fuck. sharing a board and like that's how I learned backside ollies was it was just me Lee Ralph and, and Gons skating the ver ramp and I was like I, I want to learn back they were doing them I was like I want to learn backside ollies I don't remember what they said but they gave me the blessing and I I learned them that's incredible yeah. Holy maybe bonk, shit. Bonk, your wheels off, bonk the wheels off the coping. I think maybe that was it. Wait to bonk your wheels off the coping. Oh. Bink. Yeah, you guys always had like a fucking vert ramp in the area. Like there was vert ramps down there. Like the, the, of, what, what was the indoor place called the Sugar Hill or something like that? Yeah, Jason Pistoresi Skate Park. Sugar Hill Skate Park in Fresno was always going. Yeah, they had a vert ramp. Scene. Like we could play they'd shut the doors and you could stay there all night and party and crash out and skate and rage you know take shrooms and skate all night drink beers yeah hook up with chicks rage like it was a good scene man it was fun bands would play and shit oh man that yeah, was yeah. fun yeah sugar hill was good times do you, do you got sure. a good Corey chrysler story yeah fuck yeah so so when i'm living i'm living with uh 
it's when I first moved up to, not maybe not when I first moved up to Concord. I can't remember. I think it was, so I was living at 4040 Clayton. It was like me, Card or me, Wade Spire, um, um, Double D, Dave, and uh, Albert. So Albert moves out of his apartment, and Corey Chrysler's looking for a pad. And I'm like, come up here. And like, Wade didn't really know who he was. Corey, and Corey at this time, he was kicking junk. Okay. He's getting off heroin. Oh. So he, he comes up there and he's in his room. He's got like his, Impala kind of broken down out back in the alley and he's there and his, he invites his buddy, Chris pool and this other dude, I forget his name. So he's got like three buddies in his room. And so mind you, he's trying to get off drugs and shit. So he's kind of going crazy, but they're in their room and they've got like suicidal tendencies or slayer on 10 through the boom box, <laughs> like so loud and so heavy and distorted. And they're in the room and they got, they've got a homemade tattoo gun going. So it's, and they're in there, dude, with that music blaring, dude, and the gun going and Wade comes out and Wade's so bummed. He's like, cause I got the dude in there, you know? And he's just like, what do you do? (laughs) I think eventually him and Wade, Wade and Corey got in each other's face cause Wade wasn't having it. Mm. Wade's Wade's gnarly dude. You Mm -hmm. let him know how it felt. He's a man for that. But eventually he had to move out. So that was a crazy one. Just like the, the blaring all night on 10 and zzz, the gun going. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. That was a good Corey one. Wow. Uh, I got to hear some of the story from this fucking tour. You guys went on the the van where you're like starting it up, like hot wiring it. I think it was oh, Andy, Richard and Doug and. Or a console. Uh, yeah, right. Well, yeah. Like, what were some of the things you remember that stick out from that thing? Because I talked to Andy a while back and he mentioned some stuff. I'm wondering what you'll mention if they cross over. I got some uh, it, I got some stuff. So many stories from that one. <laughs> that one was infamous. Um, We start. I remember the first day we started out because we went up, we went. The first day we left to go on tour in that van at nine, it was 95 when we went, we drove up, we all ended up in Visalia, picked up Richard and Jesse in Visalia, maybe picked up Alan in Fresno. And then we headed up to the flumes. We wanted to go see if the flumes were dry and the flumes were not dry. They were filled to the brim. There was, we went up there quite a few times to skate that. After what? we had initially skated and it was watering it a lot of times. Real quick before you go on, when was the first time you discovered the flumes as a skateboarder? Oh, I think Tom, we used to skate with Bakersfield guys a lot. And uh, this guy, Freddie and, um, oh fuck, I'm spacing names right now. It's been a long time. Have you known we about for a long time? Yeah, Tom took me up there the first time. We were probably skating that in the late 80s. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Six and then, yeah. Yeah. Then I took I took um I took Stacy Gibo and Red Dog and Jake and Noah Peacock. They all came to my house. They were all they all showed up at my house real late and they stayed on my mom's floor in a little apartment, two bedroom apartment. They were all like frying or on mushrooms or something. <laughs> oh wow. And they crashed on the floor and like my mom had this shitty boyfriend at the time. I think he kicked like Jake in the head, like who are these fucking assholes on the floor? So one oh. of them said, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then uh, the next day, man, we drove up to the flumes. I took them up there. We skated the flumes. Jake was rolling in. I never thought to roll in on. He's doing big disasters and rolling in. So was Gibo. They were rolling in. Hmm. That was before I knew about rolling in because it would have opened up a lot of lines. Those guys hmm. were sick. No, it was sick. He's doing like back D's. So we skated that and then skated the skated some pools in Bakersfield after. Um, but that was that, um, yeah. So late in the eight, late eighties, we were skating it, I guess. Okay. It took me there first time. Okay. So yeah. that's where the consolidated trip starts though, is you go to Started, the flumes we went there, and they're full. They were full. And so we found this natural hot spring and we went in these natural hot springs and they smelled like, like sulfur. They smelled crazy. Like, yeah, there's like these natural pools right on the river. Like. 
yeah, it's a spot like on the way back down. So we hit the hot springs and then we hit the road. And, um, you know, we, it was a, like a eighties econo line van with, with the fiberglass top extended top. Mm. We, we gutted this thing. We built a loft on the top, lined it with some foam. And that's where me and Doug Sane slept on top. And then we built a bed on the bottom underneath, like a raised thing. So you could put store stuff underneath. And then that was a bed that slept too. Then we built a bench seat along the driver's side wall that slept somebody. And then somebody would sleep on the floor. So a lot of nights, man, we slept in that van, dude. We slept in that van in New York city in Manhattan. We slept in that van. We would, we would sleep at truck stops. We'd stop at truck stops and shower, uh-huh. rest stops and sleep in that thing. Or we'd stay and get, have some money and get a hotel room, or we'd sleep on people's floors. If we got stuck and couldn't sleep somewhere, we always slept in the van. We had a hibachi, we'd like barbecue hot dogs. Then it get, then it, it got like full of ants. And so we had like a big ant problem in the van for a while <laughs> to throw everything out. It was fucked. Um, there was a lot of, yeah, that, that van roof, we actually, we were in like New Hampshire somewhere. We were going to a warp tour. We got invited to go to, there's a warp tour. We could get in, we go to the warp tour. So we, all of us go to the warp tour. Um, a big fight breaks out and Andy started some shit. I, I think he spanked some girl on the ass. <laughs> we stage dive. We, we ran, we were on stage and we ran out during L7 or somebody and like stage dove uh-huh. like jumped out in the crowd, like fully like, <laughs> Holy, like uncool shit to do, like on a real stage. Um, we did that. And then so we got in trouble and they called the cops and I wasn't around, but they went, they found these guys at the van, like Jesse and Richard. And somehow they got the video camera and there was marijuana in the video camera. So they took the video camera and it was at the police station and they got Jesse Pias, Tina Pias called the, the, um, called the police station and like bitch these cops out and we ended up getting our video <laughs> camera. But after all that, we were all hammered and we had to leave. This was before getting the video camera back the next day. We drive to a hotel room and Doug's driving. He's the only one sober enough to drive. And he drives to this hotel and there's like an overhang in front of the hotel. Well, it's, it's, it's low. And so he drives into it and he hits it with the fiberglass roof. Yeah. And it, and it sticks to the overhand. He hits it and then he's like, oh shit. And he backs up. And as he's backing up, the roof stuck to the other structure of the hotel and it fucking cleanly just ripped the whole fiberglass thing off and it just landed on the ground. And then they backed up and it was the craziest thing. Like we jump out and run over and we're looking at the roof on the ground. And I look back at the van and Andy pops his head up at the top of the van, no roof. And he's like, ah, like, like just screaming and laughing we're just all like we're on the east coast we have no money you know no no i don't even know if the car was insured i don't even think it was insured like Uh, yeah or cell phones so we ended up picking the roof up and putting it on back on top of the van and parking it in the parking lot and sleeping in the hotel room the next morning we get up and we went to a hardware store and we put the roof on. We got a bunch of expand of foam and screws and just expand of foam, glued this roof back on and screwed it back on. And it made it another month on the road. Fuck. Cause we were like, we did a, we was like two months on the road and that was like a month in. And you didn't have any key, like you, you had to hotwire it to start it. Is that right? At one point. Yeah. You had to touch like part of the battery and part of the metal frame of the car <laughs> oh to start my. it. Yeah, that's what that's yeah. When that big fight broke out in Utah, um, those guys, Doug had to. They were all in the van trying to get away, and Doug had to jump out and start the van like that. And Andy was driving, and these guys were coming at him with like um, hockey clubs. Oh shit! Yeah, these dudes, these dudes in Salt Lake City, <laughs> the whole party turned on us, bro. It was crazy. Andy kept spilling beer on this guy's head. He had like real, this guy had like real nice, like feathered hair, you know, and he's sitting down on, and Andy had his beer in a cup and he kept like just a little drop and the guy would kind of go like that. Like, what the fuck, man? And finally he figured out that like Andy's like, Andy's like, what? Fuck, I'm sorry, man. I'm fucked up. <laughs> all right, man. All right. 
he'd spill a little more. And finally, <laughs> the dude got up and got in Andy's face. And then I think Richard kind of got involved. And then it was like, these were all bro, like, these were all like snowboarding bros in Salt Lake City. Okay. So we're uh-huh. at this, we don't know anybody. And so soon enough, like the whole party like turned on us, dude. And we were, we were in the living room and the whole part, like my arms were pinned at my side and every, like, can you imagine like a room of like 50, 50 people and everybody turns on you? So my arms are pinned at my side and they're all like, oh, fuck this guy. And this one guy puts his hand finger in my mouth. And he's pulling on my mouth, dude, like oh. slit my mouth. Like I still got a scar. And he's like, I'm going to rip your fucking mouth up. And he was like a real psycho, man. Huh. And it was crazy because my arms were pinned at my side and they started roughing us all up. So finally we got out of that. And I leave, I get outside. And then I was like, I want to fuck that dude up that had that his finger in my mouth i was like like i snapped it like i want to get that guy for that uh-huh. so i picked up like a big 22 ounce bottle and i went looking for him dude and i couldn't find him and then i walk out of the house and andy's out front fighting a couple dudes like toe to toe and i just run past this dude the guy that andy's fighting i just break this bottle right over his face dude it was fucking brutal dude oh. and then we all start running <laughs> And they want to kill us, dude. And these guys got hockey clubs. And then I run to the van and there's dudes running behind me. And Richard's got a skateboard. I said, give me that board. And I could and I could look up through the back window of the van. I could look through that window and see the side window. And I could see this dude running up. And like the second he come came around the side of the van, grip tape side. Whack. Dropped him. It was br- it was gnarly, dude. So he dropped him. And then those dudes had those guys a lot of dudes started chasing me then and then a dude was trying to run me over i ran those guys all jumped in the van and that's when doug jumped out and was trying to start it and he's watching his back making sure he didn't get hit and andy's driving and then they peel out and i'm running and this dude's trying to run me over and i dude i like it was like a movie i jumped into this backyard I'm running through this backyard and there's a dog chasing right behind me. I hurdle another fence, run through no a couple Holy and shit. I hit. Yeah. And I hide out and for hours. And then I ended up sleeping under a, a semi and then I had no shirt. My shirt, I walked like late hours later, I walked back to the house where the fight was and my shirt was still laying in the street. So I put my shirt on. I walked into downtown Salt Lake city and made a bunch of phone calls and somehow got a hold of those guys because I lost those dudes. They took off in the van because I got chased away. It was cops everywhere. I was hiding behind a garbage can all night. It was fucking, it was intriguing, dude. My I, heart was pounding. I think it might have been a different fight, but it sounds like it's that one. And I'm pretty sure Jason has the board that you hit the guy with. And there's like a little bit of hair or something like there's on the. the- on there's the skin. There's a patch of skin with hair coming out. Does Jason yeah. still have that? Yeah, dude, Keenan. Ke- I never really thought about it, but it was pretty brutal, man. I w- I wasn't thinking, but Keenan. Ke- I remember when Keenan saw that, and he just couldn't believe it. He was just like flabbergasted. He was just like, "Oh my god!" Like, <laughs> insane. It's like human scalp and skin. Yeah, dude. I've. I mean, I've heard a lot of some some of these stories. Like, I don't. So Andy told me, and this probably a different one, but he said he was picking up on some chick on that tour and he brought the chick back to fuck her in the van. And he, and she's like, you got a condom. And he's like, no. So he's going to look for a condom and you're fighting some dude. And the dude you're fighting happened to be this gr- like she knew Girl's him. Friend. So it ruined his whole. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that was in Atlanta. Yeah, I was I was wearing flip flops. Oh man. Yeah, I had flip flops on, dude. And my I had no <laughs> shoes. I got in a fight with this guy. It turned into a wrestling match. He was like a German dude. I was uh-huh. called Nazi. I was like, you fucking Nazi. <laughs> I lost my shit. That's <laughs> right. I forgot about that. Yeah, we were staying at Thomas Taylor's house and we were hanging out in Little Five Points. That's where it was, Atlanta, right? Yeah. Taylor was like a he was like this big. He was like three years old. Little GT, no one knew. No one knew the shredability that was gonna come our way. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That was a good story. Oh, d- dude, the next day, I, it might have been the next day or it might have been earlier that day. We were all at Thomas's house and somebody like Jesse comes back and he's like, Oh, dude, 
it's fucked. He goes, Andy's down at little five points and we're all, Oh, is he on one? And they're like, yeah, dude, he's down there. He's drinking forties. He's down in little five points holding court. And we go down there and Andy's just in the streets. Just, just like, but I don't know. People liked it. He was just fucking like, yeah, he was raging. He was just raging, dude. Huh? Crazy. Uh, he usually gets like he. <laughs> we yeah. went. We went on a skate rock trip, and he got into it. It was insane. Oh yeah. He's he's such a fucking ball of energy, man. Always. Oh my god, dude! Fucking instigator from hell. So that's what I was always tripping on. Like I don't know Doug that well, but from my perspective, he seems like he's instantly my vote for mellowest dude in that car. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you. Like, yeah. is, is there some weird, like, everybody's, like, pretty gnarly? I mean, where's Alan in all this? Is he kind of to himself or? He, you know, he did get, he was there, but he just wanted to have his beers or his, you know, Boone's Farm at the end of the night. Uh -huh. have a cigar. He but was there, but he was a little more mellow. He, he was, he wasn't as gung-ho to get crazy, you know, as you guys are all just young and just fucking excited to be on the road. Totally. Uh -huh. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. What, uh, what about, uh, do you remember this story about, um, I guess you picked up Andy when he was struggling, maybe a little bit with drugs, brought him to Visalia and you were wiling out on the freeway. I don't know. He he said he grabbed the wheel and he was like, how oh. about this fucker? <laughs> oh, that story's gnarly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was in Visalia. Yeah, we went that night. We went to we went to a party. We went to this party and it was it was out like in the country at, and it was on a like a dairy farm. And it was it was like, you know, the big metal gates that where they keep cows uh -huh. They're like maybe six foot tall, big you know, five, there's like five bars. They're like big gates where they corral. And it was like in a, this cow corral. And it was like music and everybody was in there on the mud drinking beer. And like, we got in a fight there. We were all on mushrooms and drinking beer and shit. We got in a fight there in this crazy corral. It was wild, dude. I had a broken arm. I had a cast on. We left there and then we went to this other house. And then Andy got in a fight at that house with some dude. And then I think I broke down and started crying from the shrooms, had like a crazy like, but then, you know, whatever. It was good. It was like cleansing, you know, you purging yourself. It's mm. good to cry. So I did that. And then that fight broke out and we're leaving there and we're going down 198. And our friend Kelly Spencer had a nice Jeep. It was a nice Jeep, man. I think it was paid off too. <laughs> oh, shit. And uh, we're going down 198 and they had, there's like, there's not like a divider, a metal divider. There's these type of trees. They're like real thin, like little branches that grow up. These big, mm -hmm. tall bushes are are separating the traffic flow on the freeway. So Kelly's driving and he kept, keeps turning around and talking to us in the back seat. And he did it a couple of times. And then like one time when he did it and he's turned around driving, talking to us behind, and he grabs the wheel and just jerks it. And sends the car like jolting and Kelly grabs the wheel and we, we drive through the median in the freeway going really fast, bust through all these trees and bushes. And we end up on the other side of the freeway oh, facing that oh, the opposite direction we were going. And there's an off ramp right there. So Kelly just guns it and goes up the off ramp. And we drive to these people's house that we know not too far from there. And, and uh, it was crazy because the car was totaled. It's out front. And we 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 basically snuck into these people's house while they were there sleeping, but they didn't know we were in there. And we were in there hiding in their house. <laughs> and the cops are out front. Wow. And, and Kelly told the cops, he said some he said these gangsters um shot at us or something, or these gangsters, these gangsters cut us off the road. And the cops knew who Kelly was because it's a little town and everybody knew this guy. And so they 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 just left him alone and then we all got away we ran and got away but the truck his truck was totaled yeah it was richard richard was there me this guy jeremy thompson kelly spencer andy the truck was totaled i mean we could have we could have easily died 
Fuck. The concrete overpass was like not much further. It was oh. gnarly. It was super sketchy, super crazy. Got away with a lot of shit. And it happened real fast, you know, it happened real quick. Yeah. Yeah. We we got lucky a lot of times, man. A lot of fucking times. I think about that a lot. Looking back, I'm like, man, as you get older, you just kind of get a little more like, I don't know. You start to kind of have an idea what you're doing a little bit more. Yeah, you, you count your lucky stars, nothing happened then. Just no. try to not do it anymore. Yeah. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Jason said to ask you about the uh, Bow Nose Consolidated ad. Bo, oh, Bow Turner. I think so. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We were he. We were at the trade show, and like Bow Turner came up to me and Jason at the trade show, and I think like he was real mad about that ad. He wanted to beat us up. <laughs> we were both like, oh no, we were scared. It was like Bow Nose Consolidated or something. There was like a something something happened with like there was a graphic with an alien on it getting beat up or something and I think they thought that was disrespectful to Alien Workshop but we loved Alien Workshop we loved Blender and Alien Workshop yeah more of like a nod people take it stuff the wrong way uh. so he didn't like this graphic or something and, and he called Jason and he's like I don't like that graphic with that alien thing on it because of this or that and Jason's like like what like you invented aliens or something <laughs> you know like we can't do something with aliens because you invented aliens and i think he was real pissed off about that he didn't like that and then we saw him at the trade show <laughs> and i think it escalated that those ads maybe there might have been a couple other ads i think it was like originally moish did a art a board for me and it was like this white trash dude punching out an alien or something uh -huh. and then it was like a series and in the end like he's the white trash dude's in bed sleeping with alien <laughs> a cigarette and they just had sex. I think that's where it started, but yeah, he got offended over that. And then we thought we're, he was going to beat us up at the trade show, but then he, Jason just calmed him down and cooled him out. And then he didn't beat us up. Huh. It's kind of the end of it. I think maybe that was what Jason was talking about. Yeah, I think so. Probably. He also, he has this footage. Apparently he wants to give me, of uh he said to ask you when scott born quit or got fired i don't know something the end well, of he scott has that uh-huh he was filming the whole time yeah what what yeah. happened there well it seemed to me i was i was really hurt because it seemed to me like J J jason was kind of making a joke out of it or something mm. you know it seemed like he was making a kind of like making a joke out of it and it kind of wasn't you know but it's pretty funny, dude. I would love to see it. I was right there watching him film the whole thing. I think Scott went off on Birdo and, and Letitia, like he had come back from Paris and he's like, man, shit ain't the same here. And then, and then I think Jason might have quit soon after. He's just calling him out on a bunch of shit. It was real funny. Oh, was, really? Yeah, I don't remember too much of it. He might have, Scott might have tried to punch a hole in the wall. I think something. I think he did punch a hole in the wall. He might have punched a hole in the wall. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. Yeah, I saw Moish and Birdo get in a fight once. It was hilarious. Yeah, at Bro Prints next door at at, at Aaron's at the print shop. Uh -huh. and fucking Moish like charged Birdo, and they landed on top of a bunch of boxes, and he was on top of them, and and then nothing happened. But Birdo was like psycho strong. He's got psycho strength. Mm. Ask Jason about it. We would try to we try to all nut up on him like if we were out somewhere in a park. We'd all me, Jason, Alan. We'd all try to get Birdo, and Birdo would just fucking bite us off, dude. He's gnarly. That and ramp was me. so sick. It was one of the, my favorite ramps I ever skated. It was like a vert ramp that just went to vert, basically. That like, one, the first one was good, huh? Yeah. So you're talking about the first one, the, the and you the and you guys would do airs into the pillow roof, like the roof had like little like. I don't know, sheets or something, but you could like go up into them a little bit. Yeah. Man, I got to skate. That was yeah. fucking super fun. Yeah, those were, that was a fun ramp. Both of those ramps were fun. Was, was, was there, fun. could you feel it? Was there animosity between Santa Cruz and, I mean, probably not. Consolidate was probably just laughing, but is Santa Cruz pissed that you're starting a new company in their town? I would imagine so. Maybe yeah. a little bit. 
uh, especially I think it was a, probably a slap in the face because right. we all were with and, him and left and, so and took the guy. Yeah, and then uh, took the I'm sure that we're super stoked on it. So what's it like when the team starts dismantling? Like it's it's uh, Scott Bourne leaves, then Jason leaves. Yeah, there had been some dismantling before that. Like when the Piaz brothers. Yeah, when Jesse first left, that was a real bummer. That really sucked. It was right. always little, little, little downfalls, and then it'd get to a point where it was kind of good again. But it sucked after Jason left. But we had Todd Prattrud and all those Minneapolis guys, and so we were real focused and had like a real solid thing going. And Todd Prattrud's great really art. Cool. He's everything. done a couple of things for me. I'm so hyped on it. Really? Yeah. yeah. I, I, that was a believe. I mean, partly that was a big reason I stuck around was because my respect for Brad Rude and he was still there and I liked what we were doing. I loved Nesser and Peterson and Seth McCallum. And, yeah. And all those many dudes. So remember the bunny rabbit that's holding his like foot or something. Oh like, my God. Yeah. I want you to have this. It's good luck. Yeah, I love but, that. I had so, that poster yeah. on my wall for days. Yeah. Congratulations. It's a man. <laughs> oh, Berard. Yeah. <laughs> great. Yeah. That was a Berard graphic, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, man. I, you know, like Jason left and I was super bummed on that. Like it really sucked. And I, but I stuck around because of those dudes and I liked what we had going. I felt like, man, we'd been working hard for all this shit. And then, you know, it was just slow decline after that. It was some good years. But the second, like, Birdo wouldn't embrace those dudes having a Nike shoe sponsor and Todd being part of that. Um, those dudes got bummed and left and, and consolidated went, I think they just went too anti, you know? Yeah. I always thought they'd spent way too much. I mean, I get, I get yeah. why or what they were trying to say, but like when every ad is not a team writer, it's just anti Nike. Yeah. You're almost advertising Nike in a weird way. Like I always was taught when I grew up there, like if you hate something, don't mention it because any yeah. advertising is good advertising. Yeah, that's so, what Fausto always said. And any publicity dude, is good publicity. Him and Jake told me that. It's like, that was the thing with Jake. People always were like, Jake gives me shit all the time. He hates me. I was like, no, if Jake hated you, he wouldn't acknowledge you. Wouldn't talk to you. Yeah. If he's, exactly. if he's fucking with you, he likes you and he wants you to improve your life. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't know that? Who hasn't know. figured that out yet? Yeah. That's like one of the first lessons I told my son. I said, buddy, don't take things. If somebody at school, a teacher or somebody's, bullshitting with you telling a joke joking around with you it's probably because they like you you mm. know so right yeah i think so 100 percent. i mean yeah, valuable to know that we me and my crew have always like relied uh, a lot what? on humor and sarcasm and, uh -huh. and fucking around like you know and we were talking me and mckenny were skating the other day and he's like yeah. we met this dude and he's like you know how a, you know a dude's rad when you can fucking bust his balls and you just met him that day, it's like, uh -huh. yep. <laughs> right, dude. Yeah. Sure, That's man. And then did AP, was AP still here or did he move to Australia already? At what point? Like when, uh, I guess, after, when Jason when and them started. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I think he was still around because remember when Scott beat, J beat Alan up? Did you hear that story? No. It was in Santa Cruz and it was after Scott quit. And Scott had a big boner for Alan. I don't know why. And Alan, they're in Santa Cruz and Alan's, he's he's filming Clint P K Peterson. They're out somewhere in Santa Cruz filming the street trick. Alan's wearing flip flops. <laughs> and Scott Bourne's in town visiting some chick he knew or something, you know, and he's driving by and he sees Alan and he pulls over and jumps out and commenced to go after Alan. And like, I think he popped Alan a couple times. Alan ended up like running down the street from him, running from <laughs> barefoot on the camera, lost his shoes, running from running away from Scott. Oh. Alan was not a, he, he's like, Carmen, you know me, I'm not a fighter type. He's like, I didn't, you know, I don't, it was, I, I I'm still bummed on that dude for doing that actually. Well, huh? Yeah. I'm still bummed on Scott for doing that. That wasn't very cool. Yeah, he Alan said that Scott said he was sorry for it and shit. Oh, I did he did. Shit. I broke TNT's nose. You know, I didn't want to, but right. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. 
Al, I think I think another Scott Bourne. I think G- Julian wanted to get in a fight with Scott. This is a story Jake told me that Julian wanted to fight Scott that night, and I was there hanging with Scott, and we were out front, and they were Julian and Tony were behind me. Well, Ju- well, Tony jumps on my back, right? He just jumps up on my back, and he had a spike bracelet on, and and he fucking he spiked me right in the ear with that thing, you know. Oh. And like, I didn't know who it was, and I turn around, and he starts to come at me. So I just give him a little blip, little lefty, like pop, and then he comes at me again, and then I hit him with the right, and I, I guess I broke his nose. Broke. I feel bad. Sorry, Tony. I love yeah. you. I love your skating. That I didn't want none of that. That sucked. I remember that for some reason. Oh, I felt real might... bad about that. I, where I, was that at? At Slint? where was that? It was at um, like that Harrison Street like co-op spot. Ah, okay. I the name of it, twenty one something, or it was like one of those co-op mission co-op mm. spot, and it was like we used to have art shows and bands, and that sucked. Fuck yeah. Um, I remember. See, I've done stupid shit too that I regret. So I'm sure he regrets punching Alan. I don't, you know. I don't oh, know. dude, I I always like, say I always say it. Imagine fucking Instagram and cell phone cameras in our era. Like it was, we'd be oh, done. Yeah, we'd be <laughs> <to jail. laughs> yeah. Like, have a jail. Yeah. Thank sense. God, all this shit that happened wasn't on video. Um, yeah, yeah, you can't ride like that anymore. <laughs> People don't want to be treated like that anymore. Got to yeah. stop the violent shit. Ah, Fuck. what, what, so what happens it towards the end of your, uh, stint with, uh, consolidated? When did you finally just peace out? I, I kind of pieced out a while ago, but they'd still been kind of selling some boards for me and shit here and there. Right. I just got to check. You had like karma skateboards or, right? I was doing the karma skateboards thing. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted, in, I wanted to, I wanted to diversify consolidated and like, be like the sister company, you know, like let's plug Car- Karma Skateboards into what our infrastructure we already have going. Right. And it to like Letitia and Berto and they didn't, they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to oh. help me out. And then like, I remember talking to Thieve, nobody really wanted to get behind it because, you know, for whatever reason, because there's the margins in skateboards aren't that good, right? What it takes to make a board and sell it for, it's not much money. Got to make a bunch of clothing and shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Caddy I... whack, you know, that's where all the money is. It's all in the shoes. It's all in the shoes. It is. It's crazy. It's well, that's like, another thing is consolidated. God bless their their souls. <laughs> they made shoes, you know, and that's hard to try to do a shoe company. <laughs> with, the, with the bananas? <laughs> with the bananas. What do you think, Colin? You know, they that's that was uh, bananas. <laughs> you gotta you gotta you gotta stick to your niche, man. Like you're you're not a shoe company. Yeah. I'm not a shoe company. You can't, you're not going to go against Nike, dude. Well, I mean, Roberto Alamon's one of my, a good friend of mine, but he can't carry your whole squad when you're running just anti Nike ads every month. No. He's like, it just fizzled out. It's done. They called the, they, they, they pulled the plug on it. What was your first trip with Jake? Um, the first, the very first trip with Jake was, would have been that, would have been that, um, trip to the flumes i was the first time i think i i had oh. met him at mag he was working downstairs but that would have been like the first official trip we did a real we did a real cool trip um it was like it was jake peter hewitt and luke ogden and monk and we went out to like uh we went up hit a bunch of parks up in oregon and then we went out to montana looking for these full pipes we got totally shut down we got ticks and stuff oh yeah we got ticks and no full pipes but we went looking for pipes it was pretty sick we flew into into missoula montana and got a car and we're driving out in the out in the middle of nowhere looking for full pipes yeah it was a little there was a little article in thrasher some we got some photos some shit came out how that rad. was a bad one that would have probably been like early 2000s maybe uh-huh. okay um, you know, we went, we took a trip to Japan and went to skate that epic skate park, Kamikasa. Oh yeah. With Bailey yeah. cover. Um, it was a different trip. Okay. It was a different one. And we camped out there for like two days. It was like snow on the ground and shit. It was Pete the Ox. Shout out. Uh, Clint Peterson. Oh. Self, Jake and Luke Ogden. Shout out. How's that? Is that place pretty rough? It's pretty rough. Yeah. The lit. I- 
I literally watched Pete the Ox do frontside grinds and just the lip just exploded, <laughs> dude. Just, yes. I mean, there's, yes. there's photos of it. Luke got good photos of it. You could just, the, the lip just, whoosh. it was rad. He was on it. Um, that was a cool trip because I, I remember this one story. There's one one time we were getting on a train and we were going somewhere. I think this when we met Ken Nagahara. We mm. went somewhere up north, Osaka or something. I don't remember. I forget a lot of the details. But we're for one, Jake falls down the escalator going to the train. <laughs> falls all the way down. We get on the train. We ride it for like an hour or two. And we get out. And the second he jumps out of the train, it is beautiful. I witnessed this all. He, you know, you just throw your board down to jump, step on it. You know, he throws his board down, steps on it and, and rolls right over this, this Japanese dude. He's like in a suit. He's a businessman, briefcase in a suit. He skates, rolls right over his toe. And this dude, this dude does a full on, like fully karate chop Jake in the chest. (laughs) Fully got the, like fully got the stance, you know? Yeah. And he just like karate chopped Jake in the, in the chest as he skated, roll over his toe and he's skating off. Ask Clint Peterson about it. He saw it. It was, it was fucking gold, man. It was so funny, dude. It was oh so my funny. God. Yeah, Jake was a hot mess on that trip. Obviously you've never lived in this body. Yeah. He could have killed me one night, but he didn't. I punched him and knocked his glasses off. Uh. And he like he looked at me and he was, I was all fucked up. We were at some crazy club and he's like, you know, I could wipe your nose off your face right now. And I was like, thanks for not doing that. <laughs> I miss that fucking guy so much. Yeah, dude. Uh, yeah. I loved, him, man. I loved him. He was that type of homie kind of friend. Like you, you look up to and like, like you're almost like a little like nervous or something, you know, around him. You're like, cause you, you know, you're so stoked on him. You like him so much. He gives you that kind of energy. You're kind of like, Oh, Whoa. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and he had some yeah. like uh, the power he had with the acknowledgement is bar like it's second to none. It's like oh the photographic memory. Well, no, just like let's say you did something that impressed him. Yeah, his yeah, yeah. validation was greater than anyone else's. Like him oh, saying, no. "Yeah, yeah, that, I got that." That rules. You're like no one can tell me that sucks now because Jake yeah. liked it because he was a critic. So yeah, if he, he was like. You know that fucking thing? That fucking when you did that, that was it. And you're like, all right, I know for real. Day. That's it for real. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It makes day. Yeah. I, I remember skating that Amsterdam vert ramp, the metal vert ramp in Amsterdam. It was on one of the Hell Ride trips. And it was it was Bob Burnquist, Wade Spire, Jake, and me. Wade's doing everybody skating padless, nice size vert ramp. Wade's like nolly heel flip slob grab uh. on the, bob burnquist is like kickflip indie grab ripping i did i did padless on this nasty metal verb i did a like probably the best backside lip slide i've ever done in my life and i did it like first try i did this backside lip slide that was my move in the uh-huh. session and then later hours later later that night like we're just raging jake comes out gives me knuckles you like that back lip was sick you know and and to yeah. me i'm like Bob Burnquist and Wade Spire are sick, you know, but he gave me that. And I was like, oh, thank you, Jake, because it did feel good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he gave me that love, dude. Oh, you know? dude. It meant a lot. It fucking meant a lot. Yeah. And so much. Just firing you up. We That wasn't the trip where Wheatberry skated uh, the the vert ramp with like his soy and everything. What was it? I don't Wheat- know. if we. I don't remember Wheatberry being there, but. Uh, Jake used point. to tell me this story about Wheatberry that on was, that Amsterdam ramp. On the no, I don't know. There was a Euro Vert r- ramp. It, it oh, was like, that might have been the year before. And that there was the been. hugest session, like Hasoy, everybody just ripping, and uh-huh. Wheat just went up and he drops in. And he, Whoa, I'm gonna get some, <laughs> dude. So sick. And dude. Jake said it was the best moment ever. He was just like that. Fucking ruled. <laughs> he took him out there, didn't he? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, man. Did, that's fucking good. That's um, so. Good. <laughs> we got to talk about fucking three Thrasher covers. Oh yeah. You had a couple. Uh, the one that for me is the Army Street fucking kicker. 
Shifty Ollie. Cesar Chavez. Yeah. Bryce, Bryce Knight's shot. All is that, up, is that up, something yeah. that was like premeditated? Was he like, hey, I want to go here, the, the lighting on a certain time? Or do, were you guys just cruising around? Like, what's the story to, to skate that? I feel like. Or did you find it? We, I feel like, I think the story was, I can't remember if Bryce wanted to shoot it or if I, I knew about that spot, but I remember going to the mag and I brought my, one of my tight homies from back in the day, this kid, Tanito, and I brought him to the mag to meet Jake and Jake's like met him and he's like, Hey, we, we want a photo. We need a photo. So maybe they did have the spot in mind. I can't quite remember. Mm. We need a photo. Here, take this yellow they wanted me to wear a yellow shirt take this yellow thrasher shirt maybe they knew it'd be a good question to ask bryce because i can't remember if i was had been keeping an eye on it and wanted to skate it or mm. anyway they wanted a photo that was the spot and we went there um yeah it's what bryce did with it was it's way an epic photo it, it up man it's like wonderful it's so neat looking yeah, and there's like a truck coming on the oncoming coming down, and like the arrows there, and it's all like it's all like everything else is like shaded, and that's just lit up. Like it's real neat. Yeah, all that like Turns symmetry. out Bryce Knights is a good photographer. Shout out, Shout ass. Yeah, Fuck. good skate, good dude. So the was the first one the multi exposure or one? Yeah, eight? that was the first, was one? the first one. Jeff Van Dusen. That was early. That was like in ninety. They um excuse me fausto wanted a photo he wanted to give me a cover i think mm. and it was when i first got on dogtown and so like i flew from visalia that little town of visalia down to la and kevin ansel picked me up and we like went to like the epic street in in venice beach or santa monica that hill like i have this photo of tony alva it's the one tony alva and um uh, Jay Adams skated down that where they go around the cones, those epic Stesic photos, those classic Stesic photos. I stayed in a hotel like right there. Oh, and so man. that's, that's the hill everybody used to skate. So he picks me up. We go to this studio and Jeff Van Dusen's there. And we do this strobe effect photo. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. I was, it was like when I kind of first got on, it was like 1990 is real early. Was it a surprise when it came out or did you it's know? It's a surprise. And I think it might've also been my first photo ever published in, in a mag in a, no. in a legitimate magazine. I think my first photo was a cover. Is that, is that real? Yeah. Whoa. So yeah, what's, they, they, what's your reaction to that? Right to the top. It's kind of too hard to believe because I wanted it so bad, you know, like I really wanted it. Like I needed it. And uh -huh. For it to happen that quick was for a young mind. I think it was hard to kind of take it all in. I'm still trying to make sense of it kind of sometimes. Right. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's cool. I talked to uh, Freitas about when he got, he got his only cover was Richard. And, yeah. And that story. Is that photo. Yeah. We were talking about that photo today. Me and my buddies, we were at the skate park. Uh-huh. They skate this, they got this DIY. We were at Clear Ridge. Huh. Yeah. We were talking about that today. Yeah, that, that that I watched the Nick one. That was great. I love what he's doing. He's doing good stuff. Super good. I'm yeah, high. I'm so thankful for him yeah. to have held on to all that stuff. For yeah. sure. Yeah, so, and just like a cool dude. Like his vibe is fucking. I everybody needs a little bit more of that vibe. We just need to be free and love each other. Yeah, you know he's rock I mean? solid, man. Yeah, he's just like rolls with it and he's positive and that's the kind yeah. of people I want to surround myself with. Yeah. So uh, did, were you aware of the King of the Road? That was what I was thinking. Were you aware of the King of the Road challenge? It was the Karma Tashef challenge. Where it was. Uh -huh. I did I did see that. Yeah. Yeah, man. That was that was I, I went with those guys for that. I I actually did, really? did second angle camera and it was fucking they were stoked like all those little things are cool like just kind of like a tip of the hat to like something like that you know what i mean oh man i'm feeling it that's that's respect mm. there was probably a lot more traffic now though than when i did it <laughs> i know and i think those guys did it like at rush hour like i think it was like 5 30 seriously or something wow yeah uh was at the end were you was it 
I can't remember if this happened or not, but I kind of thought maybe you were Spitfire TM or something for a minute. Mm, Ruben got me on Spitfire. I was doing when um, Greg, Greg Carroll, they were doing this thing called it. Like they had a wheel company. It was called race wheels, but it was something before that. And I was trying to do race, race wheels. Maybe it was turned into Hornet. Too. There was they circuit kind of wheel company, circuit yeah. hornet race. I remember. That. Yeah, so I was trying to do race wheels, and okay. I wrote for race, and was trying to do this wheel thing, and did an ad for Jess, and I think Doug Sains. We did a few cu- cool ads, and um, we were trying to do that, but then it it just kind of got shit canned, and then Ru- Ruben Orkin asked me if I wanted to ride for Spitfire, and I was like, oh fuck yeah, mm. yeah, he got me on. Damn, another fucking legend we've lost a lot of dudes huh i know unbelievable yeah when did karma become confident that he was a i want to be a like i'm gonna dive into this music thing what you play music did you Um, have a guitar when you were real young did you ever take lessons I had acoustic guitar and friends would teach me stuff. And then when I was like still living in Visalia, we had a punk band. Tom Knox was the drummer or no, oh. Tom, Tom was, I think, no, Teddy Blackman, Dale's black Dale Blackman's cousin was the drummer. And then Bill was on vocals. Tom was playing guitar and I played bass. Oh, we were, it was called green days gone. We, we did some, <laughs> we did a, yeah, we had a little jam space in downtown Visalia, and I was playing the bass. That that was kind of the first thing. And then those guys wanted to play a show, and um, and I showed up to practice one night, and it was a different guy playing bass. I wasn't, I would, I wasn't cut. <laughs> yes, I was heartbroken. Damn. Yeah, and I kind of was like, well, I guess I'm out of the band then because this other guy's going to play the show. I'm not good enough. And then I moved up to Concord in '93, and I was had a guitar and was playing in my in my bedroom a lot guitar and then ethan fowler and thomas campbell started to come around and we would jam out on the ramp guitars and then played with doug sains lived in in concord and he was a drummer so him and i started to play together a lot when i lived in oakland Uh or 95 we were jamming a bunch and then we'd go to santa cruz him and i would jam a bunch then I moved to the city, and that's when I we did this band called Sixth Degree Theory, and it was me and this guy Mike and Ethan Fowler was playing drums. Oh, we, that's who I played my first like sh- legitimate like playing a show with. Where was it, it at? It, I think the Tip Top in San Francisco on Mission Street. We played the Tip Top a bunch, and okay, a couple other places we played around, and um, that lasted like six months. But we went into a studio and recorded. No way! We, so there's we, recordings of that. Yeah, there's recordings. Yeah, we recorded on two inch tape. I still have the two inch tapes from that one. Okay. Um, we went to a place on 17th and Lincoln, and this guy had a recording studio, two inch analog tape in his in his basement in his garage below his house. It was where Jeff Clint recorded that record, um, that Joaquina record, the Foam and Mesh. It was the same studio. He's the one who told us to go there. It's like oh. 96, 97. We went there. And recorded that but the, if you've ever heard that joaquina record the foam in the mesh it was recorded on Seven Lincoln on two inch tape and that record sounds really good man wow really good. we our stuff was just whatever because ethan wasn't a phenomenal drummer uh like he made us re- like you know a drummer makes a band right and he was mm-hmm. fucking really good musician huh yeah Have you talked to him recently he's still playing music probably uh, I haven't. I'd love to, though, man. I'd love yeah. to reconnect with Ethan. I, I'm not sure where he is these days. Same. Yeah. What a rad yeah. dude. Yeah. You should talk to him. I would love to. I would, to, I would, I would love to. We were talking to Ethan. I would watch that in a heartbeat just to catch up, see where he is. Yeah. Yeah. He was great. yeah. So that we played and then he, he was like, well, you know, he was too good. He's like, these guys suck. So <laughs> he broke the band up. And then I reconnected with Doug Sains. So well, me that was a uh, magic Doug Sainz, yeah. And then this guy Doug Poor, um, he's brothers with the filmer Mike Poor. Oh yeah, he it's his brother. I met I met Doug through Mike Poor. So Doug Poor joined the band, and then he was he, he's a really really good bass player. 
So when that happened, it was like, wow, this kind of sounds cool. So we just were doing that for years. But the three of us played together for a long time, like 13 years. We were playing together in the city. Did you put out anything on vinyl? We only did CDs, unfortunately. We did like, yeah, we did like two full length CDs and then like a four song EP. And it's all on Spotify and stuff. It's you guys would play at Hotel time. Utah. It would be all the time. And, and Jehovah lived like two blocks away. So we would always go and party there and watch you guys play. So rad, dude. You guys would sometimes oh, tie one on while you were playing, too. It was fun. Yeah. 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 We, yeah we were much better in, in the rehearsal space than <laughs> the live thing. We were better in the, in the, re- it's in the hard sp- playing in front of people sometimes, right? It's terrifying. Yeah. Especially, yeah, you but you played a lot of shows, right? Weren't you? Were you singing in a band? What were you doing? Yeah, yeah, for not a lot, but for I don't know, maybe it was two years, like a year and a half, two years, probably. Yeah. you get yourself in the right state drinking always like (laughs) you know i haven't drank for like six years right now but uh okay i realized that it was my my, that was my medicine like that i that helped me through a lot of things like i yeah yeah, a lot of that shit i mean try to for anybody out there that's ever done karaoke you probably Uh are drunk when you do it try doing that sober the first time i did karaoke sober I was fucking shit in my pants. I was like, what is this? Old, different it's ballpark. so different. But when you're drunk, you're just like, ah, you don't give a fuck. Yeah. You don't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I think the drinking was a big part. But also, and, and you probably would say the same thing, is the music takes over. You get fucking into it and you're like, I, don't, I, I love what I'm doing. You, you forget. Know? Like you go in and play the first song and then, then the show's over. Yeah. And, you don't remember the last 45 minutes. Like it, you totally blank out. Like it's right. weird. It's neat. I think I love, I love jamming where you just connect with somebody for the first time. And you're like, Whoa, we're do we're like, we didn't say anything. It's just, it's doing it. And it's like, that feeling is like, you really can't describe it to someone that doesn't play music. Really. It's like, it's pretty cool. I think that's why so many people want to play music is they experience that. Yeah. It's fucking great. It's I loved, I, I reminded Nick cause Nick had this idea. I think he even forgot about it, but he, at <laughs> one point he was writing songs and then he was going to send the song to a friend and the friend was going to write lyrics and record lyrics over his song. And he was going to do a whole album like that with different people for each song. And I was uh, like, that cool. would be so cool. Like, you know, all like, music and then has a different vocalist on yeah. each one. And like a friend that yeah. wrote a cool song, like maybe there's a theme, maybe there's not, but just like that idea seemed really neat. Speaking of Nick, like he played with us for a number of years too. Right. At, like before Doug Poor came and played bass, uh-huh. Nick was playing Fender Rhodes and bass in our band. Uh huh. He shined, you know. It's fucking natural. So yeah. did did Learned you a lot from him. did you take that to Ohio or did that dismantle when you went to Ohio? It didn't never broke up. It just it is what it is, you know. Okay. I would, didn't, I would I would love to do something again. Get something going with those guys. Just get uh-huh. together for a week and record. Um, but it was hard at first because I was just hustling when I first got out here to make some money and get my get kind of grounded and stuff. So I couldn't really, you know, but I feel like now I'm at a place where I would love to get something going with those guys. You have a, you have one child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's 14. He's not Parker. a child anymore. <laughs> Parker. He's in high school. What's he's, his name? Parker. Parker. He's yeah. in high school. Is he in yeah. Ohio? He's here. Yeah. Yeah. He oh. lives in me. Yeah. He's close. 
Oh. Yeah, he high school. He's fourteen. He's digging school. Yeah, me and me and the mom, his mom, we broke up like after twenty seventeen. Oh, put up and shit. So, but I am not gonna leave here because I I want to be near him. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so- he's a little shit. He didn't want to have much to do with me. He's at that teenage age where he's just like into girls, and that's about it. Girls I- and computers, you know, that's what he's into. Video games or no? Big time video okay. games and super gaming computers and yeah. online chats. And he used to edit these little videos. He used to, when he was real young, he was editing these things called YTPs. They're called YouTube poops. And you re edit certain media that's online and you re edit it. It was pretty creative, pretty neat. He used to put up new videos all the time on YouTube. Ah. But he burned out on that. But anyway, nonetheless, he's like, he's very creative and kind of savvy like that it's like Hmm. second nature to them whereas for me it's like i fumble around with technology right are you (laughs) if you're gonna do any recordings are you not digital are you like analog i i we did some recordings here but we were i was still using the old tascam four track or eight track four track track. yeah on the tapes yeah i got the tapes yeah i was we were doing a bunch of that no i need to get a laptop and do some pro tools. It's just easier that way. Yeah. To, um, if, especially if you want to work with other people, right. You know, it's more compatible or unless you can go into a studio and record in on two inch tape and you have stuff worked out. Right. And you, the, an Epic record, like do it. You got, you know, the opportunity. Mm-hmm. What, so what, what are you doing out there? Are you 2022? Are you, uh, are you writing a bunch of songs? What What are you doing for work? Are you got a job out there? Yeah, I, I got. I I'm a union stagehand, so I've got my journey. Oh, that's right. Yeah, with the IOTSI out here, okay. the Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees. We're local 66. I started working with the local 16 in in SF, and for a number of years. And then when I moved out here, I hooked up with the 66 local out here, and doing working concerts and theater shows and stuff. Um, sound, lighting, rigging, you know, anything like that. So I got my journeyman's card. I got pension, you know, it's, it's a good gig. Um, I can take, I'm in a position now where I can take as much time off as I need, you know? So it's, oh. yeah, I'm going you, to Australia for two months. So. Oh, just to fucking chill? During January. Yeah. Vacation? Yeah. Yeah. With my girlfriend. You, do you still talk to Alan? He's out there. Yeah, I talk to him all the time. Yeah, I'm gonna try to go see him. Oh, cool. Yeah. Get get lead across this fucking uh get over there. Lee Ralph. Wow. Be sick. Would he? He'd swim across. He just Dude. like skate. Hey, boy, there's like my dream list, and I always hit up Lee. Cause I think Lee would do it if someone could come in and give him the laptop technology to like do the zoom and everything. It might yeah, I don't know. But fuck, I think. Dude, yeah, it would be rad. Yeah, you just got to <laughs> hook up with the right person that's like, yeah, I'll drive out and see Lee and hook him up, get him, you, get him plugged in. Yeah, yeah get it going. Yeah, we got to do that. Yeah, be tight. Well, yeah, if you see I Alan, was, tell him I said hi. I always gave him shit because he was a Dodger fan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, um, oh, I don't know. Can you hear that? I don't know how to get rid of that. Um, oh. You know, his, his, um, his his nephew, his sister's son, is named um, what's Luplo? Jordan Luplo. He's a pro uh, baseball player. I did hear for that. The Diamondbacks, and he played for Cleveland Indians too. How oh, cool! Crazy. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's weird, huh? Totally. Now, his parents had a lot to do with. They took him to all the right, all the right camps and plugged him in. Mm. His parents were like godsend, great people. Who who are you still in touch with the most from the old days? Is are is there anybody you talk to regularly? I talk to my homie Dale Blackman a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, Dale. How's he doing? He's good. Yeah. I love Dale and Garner. Yeah, Tim Garner. Yeah. I ran into him when I was out there in Visalia not too long ago. Uh yeah. Yeah, they're still kicking, man. Cool. Yeah, I, was- I keep in touch with those dudes. I was telling you earlier, like I just uh, drove up to Sacramento and had the best day ever with uh, 
Richard, Jesse, Andy Roy, Jason, Jesse, and Ricky Windsor, Jeff Toland. It was like, dude, Must come on. Class. Yeah, so many yeah. laughs. Like, we couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> Man, I miss Jason, dude. I'd love to kick it with Jason again. Uh, yeah. I seen, I saw Richard and Jesse lately, and I've seen Andy here and there and stuff. Jesse but, is you know. fucking ripping. Like, he looks like he. it's like... Holy when shit. hasn't he ripped? You know, you know? Well, I thought I, he might have took a little hiatus. Yeah, here. he did. You're right. Yeah, You're right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's so good, man. But God he's so damn. good. Yeah, yeah. I think we're gonna hook up on Saturday and do one of these with Jesse. Yeah. Wow, dude. We might or might not have a little cameo from Hamburger Junior. <laughs> would be rad. I didn't know Jason made up Hamburger Junior. Like oh, yeah. so many stories were coming out that I was just like a little. I was like, "Oh, this rules!" Flying on the wall, taking it in, huh? Yeah, yeah. He did come up with Hamburger Junior. <laughs> that's right. So sick. Well, yeah, shit, dude, it's fucking rad catching up, man. It's been. I don't even remember when the last time I saw you. I don't know. Yeah, it's, I kind of just exited. It was the probably before you left San Francisco. I'm, I don't think I I've left- seen you. 2011 i left march of 2011 fuck so like 11 years yeah crazy it was you, fucking gnarly. i did on, that hard, man you were on that big blue trip uh where drahobo got arrested and you guys met odb right you went to odb yeah thing. that's right that, that's legendary did he get arrested for skating a pool him and bro no, i think he was i wasn't there but i i heard he was peeing in public maybe Oh, okay. That's right. He got arrested that night. And then also later on driving back home, um, Brooke, it was like Joe Brooke and somebody else got a, might've been Preston. I think it was Joe Brooke and Preston. Yeah. Preston was there too. Oh. And he, he got a ticket. We, I jumped in and skated this hotel pool and those dudes didn't get out quick enough and cops got them and they got like tickets and shit. And it was like a big hassle. That was a rad trip. We were skating in the Denver skate park and Dave Chappelle was there, dude. And he was, he like, it was before the Chappelle show. It was like 2000 or something. It was right before Chappelle show, but we all knew who he was, but Dave Chappelle's skating around Denver skate park, popping ollies, you know, kind of landing sideways, but pop. And there's like a line, of like 10 kids following around. No way. And he comes up and Dandra Hobel is skating the street course. And it's the, uh, the bank, bank to wall you know in the street course it's like a bank with a tall ledge on top and maybe coping and so drahol was doing this wall ride to board side it's like double side and he's just sliding down this thing and Chappelle's like watching <laughs> drahol skate and he's like who is that guy and preston's like that's spider-man dan he's like man spider-man dan <laughs> sick or whatever you know it was dude it was fucking hilarious oh that's spider-man dan that's where Sean Gutierrez comes out of the bushes and goes, That's fucking cancer. Fucking Dan. <laughs> That's cancer. Goddamn Dan. So good. Uh, we went on an Oregon camping trip so many times, but one time we went and Sean came with us, Sean and Peabody, and uh-huh. Sean did the fucking redneck reaction to seeing cancer dan like in every skate park. <laughs> we're just rolling. Dude. It was so fucking funny. <laughs> He's like, um, I was at the local skate park, and out of nowhere, Cancer Dan showed up. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Cancer Dan. Killing it. Just yeah. destroying it. Good God. That's who I stayed with, man. Huh? That's who I stayed with when I went to Frisco. I stayed with Sean. Shout out. Oh, yeah. He's doing he's good, done. man. He's working at Supreme oh. with Welsh. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. They're Love. holding it down. They got the bowl in there and shit. It's like pretty cool scene. Good scene. Hey, it's Corey at Blue Plate, 3218 Mission Street. Come see us. Meatloaf, fried chicken, deviled eggs, dollar Olympia beers. We're here every day of the week. We got a garden and we got smiles on our faces. Come let us make you happy. Head on over to your local shop and ask for Blood Wizard. If they're out, then you can tickety-tack on down to bloodwizard.com where you have all of your conjuring needs. Tickety-tack. Well, what do we what do we throw on the jukebox as we fucking walk out of here? Yeah, let's do this. Um, I'm re- I'm really into this one right now. Oh, sick! 
Richard Hell and the Voidoids. Okay. Let's do Love Comes in Spurts. All right. There she goes, man. Dude, thank Just you like so that. much, man. This has been a super pleasure. Yeah. I'm stoked. I wasn't sure if this was up your alley as far as doing something like this. So I'm stoked. I was so it. nervous, dude. I was huh? super nervous. Yeah, I was super nervous. Yeah. I, I still haven't got my tooth fixed. I, I go oh, in. Really? And, dude, I cracked this molar in half. Like biting on something? Dude, I was eating a salad at this restaurant and it had pitted Kalamata, Kalamata olives in it. Uh, and room had a full pit and i didn't realize when i took a bite that there was even olive in it and i bit down uh, it was fucking lightning to my brain it was painful anyway it stalled things out i, I was sorry about that oh not at all dude like there's no this whole thing is just like i would way rather you're more comfortable than rushed or fucking not <laughs> feeling good like you know what i mean like it's it's definitely just I want it to be a pleasurable experience. It was it was awesome. I'm so glad we got together. I love what you're doing. I appreciate what you're doing, dude. For thank for all you, the shit, dude. Fuck yeah. No, yeah. it's it's therapeutic in a lot of ways. I almost need it. It's such a what have you done for me lately uh, society, and that just bums me out as somebody that's been in the same game for so long and seen. Mm-hmm. You know, I always relate it to big time wrestling. I'm like, you leave out of there, you got 400 broken bones, you're fucking limping around, you got no money. The least you can get is some respect, you know, like in your own own industry, you should always be loved. That's all I ever wanted, man. Yeah. My my motivations in the beginning were never about money. I wish maybe there'd been more of that. But like what you're saying is like spot on. Like, yeah, it was, it's, it's about how much we loved it and the respect for it. Yeah. Thank you. You still rolling around? I went skating today. Sick. Yeah. I dropped, I dropped a couple of new things on my Instagram uh, last oh. night or yesterday. Okay. I'll I did check. A 60 flip over this hip at this uh, DIY and I did a little Ollie grab. Man, Ooh. my legs are so dead, dude. I, my legs are just feel so weak right now. <laughs> We I just did a little video with like a bunch of past uh, guests and listeners of the show where they just contribute like curb clips. Yeah. And I just put put that out and we're going to do another one where it's not restricted to any type of skin. It's just like send in a few clips. So uh, Thanksgiving, we're going to release another one. So yeah, I'd love if you get fucking the urge to send me a clip or two, even off the phone or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 Dude, gonna... dude, I saw that slappy grind, that photo on, on your talking Schmidt, the, the slap, the slappy grind photo. Uh, posted, Mike Crabtree. Is no, it... it was that one. It was, it was a photo of me. It was up on there. Oh yeah. 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 It was like I a think, van battle. I think like Tobin. Yeah. I got yeah. it. Yeah. I yeah. talked to Tobin all the time. I'm in touch. He calls me. We, we actually talk on the phone. Tobin's oh. the best. The best dude. Yeah. He uh, yeah, he had my back. For well, sure. I got your back too. And so you, anytime Greg. you come to SF, dude, please hit me up. I'd love to see you in real life. Promise that. Yeah. <laughs> and if I ever make it out your way, I'll fucking definitely hit you up. I'd love to come to Ohio. There's a lot of uh little got, untouched we, areas I've been. We got two DIYs in town. Cincinnati's like 40 minutes away. Huh. Columbus, Columbus is there's a ton of shit. Detroit's real close. I could do Kelch, Karma, fucking uh, Barry Se- Collins, Sebers right there. I think Pennsylvania. Where's he at in Pennsylvania? Yeah, around Let's that. Oh, yeah. I want to Seber, dude. Yeah. Let's go. Come out here. Let's okay. do a little tour. We'll try to Let's figure little, something out. Let's do a little mini Midwest rager. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Manifest that. Okay, I'll start fucking trying to get the stars aligned. Yeah, it just starts with just starts with an idea. Yeah. We did it. We did it. Thanks so much, dude. The serious pleasure. Always fucking stoked. It's good catching up, buddy. You take care of yourself. I will. You do the same. Let's all stay up. (laughs) Yeah, let's stay up. As the old man would say, stay up. Stay up. I know, huh? Make it right, huh? Make it right. Make it right. All right, Karma. Take care. Good seeing you. Likewise. Thank you again. Peace. Have a good night. Thank you for listening to another episode of Talking Schmidt. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. When you subscribe, you'll get notifications every Tuesday of new episodes the minute they become available. 
Also, please leave reviews and a five-star rating. It's the best way to help the show grow. All of the episodes will always remain free, but if you would like to help support the show, you can do so at TalkingSchmidt.com, where you can pick up some merchandise like t-shirts, beanies, hats, and stickers. The website has an entire archive of all of the episodes, with extra photos and videos. Email us with any suggestions, comments, or ways that the show may have improved your life at TalkingSchmidt at gmail.com. All interviews are conducted, edited, and produced by Schmitty. The intro music is Mary's Cross by the band Nature. A very special shout-out goes to the executive director, Cheryl Camisa. Shout-out. Love it! This is Talking Schmidt, where the Rolodex is deep, but the conversation is deeper. Keep the wheels greased.